This week on CrossFeed. In search of Noah's Ark. Ben Stein, expelled for real? The Church of Your Mind. How religious is your state? Religion in the Obama administration. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. Hey, everybody, we're back. I am Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Boston, Massachusetts, uh, where right now it is freezing cold, about 10 degrees outside. Oh, 10 degrees. Oh, not that. Man, every time it hits 10 degrees up here, we take our coats off. My garage door won't so, open right now because it's so cold. Uh, gotta live somewhere. <laughs> hey, special shout out there to uh, my daughter Kelly, who yesterday uh, started her first assignment at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. And also to Josh, who uh, left uh, Baghdad for Camp Taji. On the uh, Ford operating base, and is should be back here in the states in one to two weeks. In about two weeks. Hey guys, thanks for so. tuning in. So I gotta got gotta remember them, and uh, I look forward to seeing my son here uh, about another month. Cool. Any luck if he's around here on a Thursday night? You know, I'll I'll, I'll have him, you know, guest podcast. Actually. Actually, had we, you know, had had I been back and had been able to uh, have a show last week, Kelly was going to guest podcast with me. She was going. To oh, that would be cool here too. And yeah. that would have been a lot of fun. So, but uh, yeah, Josh has a uh, Josh has a, a Mac, and um, so he is. Um, um, actually, he's going to buy a brand new MacBook Pro while he's here. Oh, nice. So you know he can he can log on and we could do this three way we get his get get get, get his uh, wonderful insights. Sounds good. So what is Kaleidoscope dot net? What are we advertising over there? Oh. <laughs> um, it is it it's actually it's got to be defunct by now. I don't know if the site is still up or not. Um, they made skins for um, Mac OS uh, previous to OS 10 and uh, yes and I used to you made an LCMS skin yep yep I made a bunch of other I made a really my favorite one and and by far the most popular one that I made was a dragon one where the like the clothes box was uh, I'm trying to think it was like the eye was the clothes box and the nose was the zoom box I can't remember. It was really cool. It was the sort of metallic, purplish blue color, and uh, mm-hmm. really turned and out well. You made a Veggie Tail skin too. Yep, yep. And um, but I had your LCMS LCMS one. I don't remember those now. I'm I remember that. Well. Yep. So I did. So. I did a rainbow one, and um, I, know, I think I did another one too. I can't remember. Whoa! You did a rainbow one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what does like, that tell us? like Noah's Ark. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, like Noah's Ark. I, there, there's that aspect to it too. Uh, speaking of which, uh, somebody's trying to find Noah's Ark once again. We got uh, Randall Price, director of Liberty University's New Center for Judaic Studies. And uh, so they want to show that the Bible is good history by looking for Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat. How many times? Okay, first off, I believe the story of Noah is a real story. Okay? I don't believe it's made up. I don't believe it was, you know, some, you know, ersatz mythology from some other thing. But come on. The sucker has been, you know, how many years ago was Noah's Ark? conservatively over 6,000 years ago. We have 2,000 years to Jesus and 4,000 years to roughly to, to Abraham. Right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe 4,000 years. Okay, 2,000 years to Abraham. Yeah. Okay, so 
And we don't know how many generations really there were between the Ark and Abraham. You know, so it could be. I mean, now, well, how many things? Come on, it's been sitting up there on top of this mount. I mean, what's the chances of actually finding anything? Made of wood. You know, it's not like it was made of rock or something like that. You don't make many boats out of rock. <laughs> no. Although, okay, speaking of made of wood, one of the expeditions, of course, uh, uh, was led by um, or, or financed by the guy who um, created Gatorade. What was his name? I can't remember. But I know can't remember either. He was an LCMS Lutheran. Mm hmm. And um, so they brought some wood back, and so, uh, uh, I met a guy when I was doing my, my D-Min who knew him, and he said he had this wood that they brought down from Mount Ararat built into the doors in the front of his house. If we built this large wooden badger... Yeah. Did they ever test it? Date it? I can't... I don't know. But I just thought, you know, I thought if it was Noah's Ark, what are you doing taking this archaeological treasure and putting it in the front doors of your house? Well, you know, it's either that or make it, it was. You can, that or make it into a wardrobe, you know. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, well, see, there's a new tip that piqued um, his interest and uh, another guy by the name of... Um, Richard Bright, who's a retired Connell Airlines pilot, um, who's visited Turkey more than 30 times, um, and a Kurdish, uh, Kurdish shepherd told him that he had seen the Ark and even climbed on top of it when he was a boy. That's not a new story. I heard that story years ago. I've heard of stories of Kurdish shepherds that when they were a boy um, had gone inside of it and talked about the compartments inside of it. You know, but I, he's just some shepherd that probably stands to, even though he's not asking for money right now, probably stands to gain quite a bit of money if <laughs> if something comes of this, you know. So, I don't, you know, here's the thing. Um, okay, the problem, the reason that they can't find it, right, is that it's buried. For one, it's buried under a glacier, okay, and... Um, and it also says that it is all buried under a whole bunch of boulders. And um, so they said that the uh, boulders were probably uh, perhaps from um, attacks against Kurdish rebels on the mountain or from explosives that were set off to cover up the Ark. Um, so they're, they're, what they're planning on doing is working on removing all those boulders to see what's underneath. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I suppose they could find it. Personally, if I were Noah and I had a bunch of wood covered in pitch um, and there wasn't a whole lot of other wood available when I came off that ark, I would have dismantled the thing to build a house to have for firewood, things like that. I mean, the first thing he did is, is have do a sacrifice, right? Where'd he get the wood from? Hmm, well, gee, there's this big old honking wood pile sitting right next to him that is not going to be of any use because it's like a big giant uh, box that's about good as a, um, as a, a motel, but it's pretty stinky from being full of animals for a year. And... Uh, there's nobody else on earth except for his family, so he's not really going to be able to rent the thing out now. And so what's he going to do with all this wood? Is he going to preserve the thing or is he going to use the wood? So, I mean, frankly, I'd be surprised if it is still there. I would be too, but uh, it might be. Good luck, guys, in trying to find it. Uh, again, you know, again, it goes back to, you know, I don't need them to find it. I mean, I know the idea is to prove the Bible is true. I know that's what they're, what they're going. This is a real story. We're going to prove it's true. But, you know, you know, it's like, you know, Leonard Nimoy said, and as I've quoted on the show before, so get your shot glass ready, folks. You know, if it's, you know, if it's there, the people who believed it, who, who believe the Bible are going to say, we told you so. And the people who um, don't believe it are going to say, we still don't believe it. Right. Yeah. Jesus said... So, and I, it's funny because I quoted this uh, passage this morning um, during Bible class. 
and uh, I'm, I'm happy we after since uh, we've been doing this Bible study uh, on Luke since August of 2005, and we finished it today. So, wow. <laughs> anyway, um, I you know talked about when Jesus said in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, look, even if the dead are raised, they still won't believe. You know, Sorry. Jesus rose from the dead. People still didn't believe. People that saw him didn't believe. You know, even some of his followers that he appeared to didn't believe afterward. So, you know, finding a big wood pile on top of a mountain, you know, I mean, we've got, uh, the, you know, they've discovered uh, whale fossils on top of Mount Everest. Um, do you need any more evidence of a, a global flood? But Global warming. Yeah. I blame global warming. Well, I thought maybe that was what they said that the um, the glacier recedes every so often. So I figured maybe that was um, thanks to global warming. Woo! More carbon so we can get at Noah's Ark. <laughs> but so, you know, yeah, it sounds great. But you know, people see that and they're just gonna say, "So you found a bunch of wood there? Whoop de doo!" There's a logical explanation for it, even if I can't figure out what it is, you know, or, okay, so there was some localized flood there. And, um, and since then the mountains have, are a lot higher than they used to be, or, you know, I mean, there's a million different explanations people can come up with. So, you know, it, if people don't want to believe it, they're not going to believe it. All right. But... If they go up there and they find it, will anybody let them speak publicly? Let's go over here. I'm sorry if uh, Dale happens to be in your way here, folks, on this one. Uh, well, one thing we've learned is uh, uh, I'm going to have to put some bottom margins on some of these pictures. So uh, uh, Ben Stein was, um, oh, gosh, we're going to have a wonderful uh, uh, segue here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> think of it. Uh, you, you, you see this one coming later on. Um was supposed to speak at the commencement at the University of Vermont. Um, but remember, about a year ago, he put out a movie called uh, Expelled, in which he talked about the uh, disbelief in, of... Um, or was it that he didn't that disagree with evolution so much, is that he said, you know, but they're not allowing anything else to be taught. There's, you know, it's it's like this is the open and shut case. It can't be anything else. It's impossible to be any any other explanation. Right. And if you think there is, uh, you know, and uh, there was especially the, the one case, I think he's at the University of Iowa, uh, a guy who, you know, published several peer-reviewed articles and things, but because he believes in intelligent design, uh, he can't get tenure. Um, and that was one case they particularly pointed out. But because of that, then, um, the University of Vermont was, uh, he had done a lecture there last spring. People were very pleased with it. So he thought, hey, he'd be a good commencement speaker. Um, but uh, uh, since then, the uh, president, Daniel Fogel, was deluged with email messages uh, offended by his views of science. And uh, therefore, um, he asked Ben Stein what he should do, and Ben Stein says, "Hey, I don't want to get into grief. I just won't come." Yeah. So, the the president of the university did not tell him don't come. That was a decision that Ben Stein made because he didn't want to cause problems. So, um, so the the university is not to blame. The I would say the students and uh, probably faculty. Um, are to blame for that. So, yeah, he, um, you know, Stein says, I'm far more pro-science than the Darwinists. I want all scientific inquiry to happen, not just what the ruling clique calls science. And that's, that's Stein's whole thing, is, is he's saying, look, if someone wants to present something and say, look, I've got scientific evidence for this, um, you know, for whatever it is, that they should be allowed to present it. You know, and at least be considered. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't hold water, then, you know, it'll be disproven, it'll be dismissed or whatever, but they should be given a chance just like anybody else. I mean, that's what science is all about. And, um, and so, but the, you know, the argument is that no, this is not science, it's religion, and, um, and they're two different things and they have nothing to do with each other. So, um, 
you know, we, we've kind of talked about this at length. If you go back to older episode, we talked about the expelled movie. Um, I haven't seen it. I know somebody that owns the DVD um, in my congregation and haven't gotten around to borrowing it yet because right now somebody else is borrowing it. Um, I, I'm interested in seeing it. From what I heard, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, they've got all kinds of people on there and it's uh, pretty ev- edited. I mean, you know, definitely um, it's a documentary with an axe to grind. Um, so there's he's definitely... Uh, you know, really only presenting one side, but that's generally the case with anything like that. Um, the other side of the argument is definitely presented everywhere else you look. So it's, it's not that that Mm -hmm. the other side is being silenced by any means. Uh, he just wants to get his voice heard. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, this is, you know what this does is it's, this just proves his point. That if you believe a certain thing, if you uphold a, a particular scientific viewpoint, that nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Oh, all these complaints. No, he can't. He's not. He shouldn't be allowed to come and speak here. Hmm. Um, why not? Because he claims that people that believe a certain viewpoint aren't allowed to go and speak in certain places. You know. <laughs> you know this is this is sort of like when we talked about the um, the. Uh, those Danish uh, Muhammad cartoons, uh, where the the um, the big complaint was, you're you're accusing uh, Muslims of being violent. I'll cut off your head for that. You know. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I rest my case. Yep. So uh, yeah, I know it's um. But, okay, he was going to speak in Vermont. Well, what can you say about Vermont, you know? Um, I'm not sure what picture I had got for this one. Oh, I guess it was that one. Or, or, yeah, people sitting in church. That's what it was. Oh, okay. uh, Vermont has been, according to an article in USA Today, um, the um, there's a think tank out of... Uh, uh, Hartford, and working together with Gallup, and they discovered that Vermont is the least religious state in the union. Um, uh, only 42 percent of the people in Vermont say that religion is an important part of their daily life. Um, actually. Most of them are in New England, uh, followed by New Hampshire, 46 percent, Maine, 48 percent, Massachusetts, 48 um, percent, then Alaska and Washington State. Uh, I, and I thought Washington was pretty secular. Um, however, uh, Jim, you even you know it, <laughs> the only reason I think Massachusetts didn't make number one. It's because we have things like Harvard Divinity School and Boston University, you know, and all those theological colleges <laughs> in Boston. So I think that's what you know, <laughs> to be there. Uh, honestly, you know what I think it is? I, f- I figured that, you know, out of the people that I know, I mean, besides you, like people that I know in Massachusetts, um, and, and you could probably corroborate this, is there's a whole lot of practicing Jews. This is not just Christians. This is religious. So yeah, that's true. That it, it could be. Well, there's a lot of uh, uh, I know a lot of secular Jews up here. Probably no more of those. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, but you know, I, I I'm not sure what kept us from being number one, though we probably should have been. Uh, but Vermont, okay. This, this there's something you got to understand about Vermont too, is that for the most part, it's it's very very rural. I mean, Bennington and um, Burlington, I think. Um, are the t- two biggest cities. I know Burlington is. I think Burlington is the biggest city. And, you know, I, it's like 60,000, I think. I'm sure somebody's out there can tell me the actual population of, of, of Burlington. We do have a church up there, Community Lutheran Church in Burlington. Um, but it's not very big. I mean, so you drive through and you see these, um, the, 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 what you used to see on, on Newhart. You know, if anybody remembers the that show, yep. um, you know, Bob, you know, these these churches 
that have one church there, this white, you know, clapboard church with a steeple. Um, and, you know, generally it's UCC, um, so fairly liberal. I mean, the whole state's pretty liberal, really. I mean, it's got the socialists for a um, representative or a senator, one or the other. I can't remember what Bernie Sanders is offhand, but, you know, he's a, he's a socialist uh, and elected from that state. I mean, it, it, that's just very much that state. Uh, it really is, and you, you just... Um, so I have no really no problem believing that. Although some of the Christian people I know from Vermont are some of the coolest I've ever met. Oh, yeah. uh, we have a church up there in Williamstown, and um, neat people. They actually cut the trees down and play and in, in, in cut the lumber for their church and their parsonage. Oh, really? Cool. So, yeah, I know some really neat people from up there. Uh, uh, and Vermont, by the way, is an absolutely gorgeous state. Love driving up to Vermont. Well, based on the opening from Newhart, I kind of gathered that. <laughs> so, um, you know, but, uh, and New Hampshire, again, New Hampshire is very much the same way. Very, very rural, uh, except for um, the Massachusetts suburbs. Um, you know, Nashua. And uh, that area of, of southern New Hampshire, which is a little bit more of a city, um, but that's really people bleeding over from the north side of 495 and uh, uh, who, who live in Boston. But once again, one of our churches there in Grace Lutheran in Nashua is, is, is one of our larger churches actually doing very well, um, and they just started a new Hispanic ministry. Cool. So... Now, the top most religious states um, were, no big surprise, Alabama, 82%, South Carolina, 80%, Tennessee, 79%, Louisiana, 78%, Arkansas, 78%. Yeah, Bible Belt. And number one was yeah, Mississippi. Yep. Oh, right, right, right. So, and it said Mississippi's still number one, even if we only look at the whites, because obviously there's, a, you know, all the, the big black church and everything, and... Um, so they said, even even just look at the looking at the whites there, it's still uh, very religious. It would still be number one, um, just looking at that. So right. Well, what's interesting, of course, about this is that again, this is religious. This is not Christian, um, but that um, uh, um, Utah is not in that top number. You would think, you know, with all the Mormons out there in Utah, that would have ranked much higher than it does. You know, and they mentioned that in this article, but I was thinking about it. Um, I just, I think that that's sort of Utah's reputation, but um, I just saw a, it was actually a letter to the editor in the Salt Lake Tribune uh, that was talking about uh, uh, representation or something like that. But it said, and, and I don't know if these, this is in a letter to the editor, there was no, um, you know, citation of the statistics, but if this uh, statistic is accurate, it said that 60% of Utah is Mormon, but only 25% of them are practicing Mormons, uh, as far as, you know, regular attendees and uh, their, mm -hmm. what do you call them, stake meetings or whatever, and, uh, you know, church services. And <clears throat> so, you know, given that, 25% of 60%, you know, that's only, uh, what, 15% are actual practicing Mormons. Um, so, you know, when you look at that, that's actually not all that much. In fact, I also, um, I, I remember seeing a statistic a number of years ago that uh, uh, Utah has the highest divorce rate among um, uh, out of any state, which is kind of funny when you consider how big Mormons are on families. You know, that's their big push. Um Although, uh, then again, I have a friend that went to BYU, and, and she told me about how um, the students there would, because you can't have sex outside of marriage, so they would go get married, have sex, and then have the marriage annulled. <laughs> I think they're kind of missing the point there. But <laughs> anyway, um, back to uh, this, this article. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things I think, and, and, and um, but and this might also be a little bit of the Mormons, too. 
I think one of the reasons why New England is that there's a couple of reasons. Number one, because during the Great Awakening, of course, this became a little bit of a burned-over district. You, you had so many different revivals out here. Um, I think because of the education and everything, you know, it's just very liberal and very secular. But then I also think that as opposed to the South, the South is, you know, heavily Baptist. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of emphasis on conversion experience. And if you're, you know, you have this point where you really can, you know, point to and, and talk about a change in your life, I think that is different. I think, you know, with our tradition of, of baptizing infants, the fact that you grow up in this, um, it's easier to take it for granted. And sometimes then, you know, because, you know, you, you know, you, you don't, you know, I don't know about you, but I see, you know, but I struggle with getting my people to have daily devotions and, yep. and to really practice their faith at home. You know, and I think that's part of, a, as opposed to, again, uh, the Baptist tradition, where if my father, um, you know, went through a conversion experience, you know, this is going to be something very important to him. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and but because of uh, you know the emphasis on on more adult conversion than what we do than what we have, I might be wrong about that. Maybe you, maybe somebody else has a theory. Hey, write to us podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Uh, maybe you've got a better theory than mine, but that, that's 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 one theory that I have. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, uh, the other thing, forget, of course, is that oh, we have all the baby boomers and uh, you know those guys who you know didn't. Kind of walked out of church. I'll, I'll kind of tend to move up here, especially into Vermont. Okay, go ahead. Um, so we were talking about the Mormons. Uh, before I forget, um, I last episode I invited uh, some any Mormons that want to come on the show to talk about uh, uh, differences between their uh, teachings and our teachings, and uh, didn't get any takers. I had one person on Facebook, um, actually the same uh, f- uh, friend. That uh, that told me about the BYU thing. Um, she wants to remain anonymous. Doesn't really want to come on the show. But we had a really nice talk um, on Facebook, uh, and um, and really it it sort of came down to to this. And, and um, you know, we kind of talked about uh, some differences and that, and and debated a bit. But really, what it came down to was, um, you know, I said, "Do you know for a fact, absolutely, that?" you will spend eternity with God and have eternal life. And she said, well, if I am obedient and, you know, and and have enough faith and, you know, avoid temptation and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And basically it was, if I do this, 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 and this, um, then yeah, but, you know, we're here to be tested and stuff. And, and so, it, you know, ultimately her answer was no. I, I don't have that assurance. It all depends on how faithful I am. And Actually, she she would have that assurance. She just may not be in the highest level of heaven because you remember the Mormons are different levels of heaven. Yeah, but their definition is um, as far as being in the presence of God. You know, that's the what they call the celestial kingdom, um, and that's that highest that's right. level. So, um, but but unless you're a, a real reprobate, you at least get, you can be the servants of the people in the celestial heaven. So you see, celestial kingdom. So you see, that's 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 us the worst. Yeah, but yeah. Um, we as uh, as Christian pastors, we're the willfully wicked, aren't we? No. 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 Okay. no we're not willfully wicked. Mm-mm. All right. I thought I heard that somewhere that if you're uh, if you, if you're one of the people that's actively um, choosing to lead people away from Mormonism, that that makes you automatically willfully wicked. So I, I might have that wrong. So I had a friend. I don't think so. I, I had a couple of friends of mine who uh, really understood. Uh, uh, concentrate, Pinky. Concentrate. Really understood uh, Mormonism very well. But uh, so we're good uh, either let's way. Let's move on here from 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 uh, the University of Vermont. Uh, well, let's talk about the change in religion then that's going to be happening in the Obama administration. Let's go that direction. All right. The word is inclusiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, he says that um, 
Yeah, this is uh, President Obama saying that we know that our patchwork heritage is a strength, not a weakness. We're a nation of Christians and Muslims, Jews and Hindus, and non-believers. Um, this is from his inaugural address. And um, so this, uh, this article is mostly about the uh, prayer breakfast, which has been going on since George Washington. And uh, he said that... Uh, it featured faith leaders chosen to symbolize America's traditions of religious tolerance and freedom, included for the first time a sermon delivered by a woman. Which I, you know, it, it, it definitely says something. I, I think that uh, that this administration is really looking at these sort of firsts. You know, first black president, first woman to do this, and, you know, a lot of, it's really trying to uh, emphasize a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, accepting all people, tolerance, you know, whatever term you want to use. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think, I don't know if the, how much the administration necessarily is, you know, you know highlighting it. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly others are. But on the other hand, if you, if you think about it, um, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, quartered evangelicals, um, so did George George uh, W H W Bush, the first George. Bill Clinton was, uh, you know, questionable, but uh, claimed to be evangelical himself, you know, and was a member of uh, uh, a Baptist church in uh, Arkansas. Although they uh, and then uh, excommunicated him. Okay, but but he was a member, you know. You sing the choir. Uh, you know, that, that's how he got face on FaceTime as they were on TV and he was sitting right behind the preacher singing in the choir. Uh, you know, so, you know, to a certain extent then, you know, these guys were, um, you know, all, all from this tradition where, you know, women pastors are, are still kind of suspect. Mm -hmm. um, however, within, um, you know, President Obama is UCC. He's out of the United, United Church of Christ. Um, dying, mainline body. Uh, but uh, still, uh, but that's a completely different understanding than we've had in presidents for some time. I don't know who did it under Richard Nixon, but Nixon, of course, was a Quaker. And he, you know, you know but, but at that time, though, that was the early 70s, and there weren't that many women ordained yet, really. Right. Yeah, that's a pretty new thing. So, you know, okay, here's the thing. He obviously needs to include all different religions because he needs to govern all different religions, okay? So I think it's important as we look at that not to sort of go, well, are you saying that, you know, that Jesus isn't the only way or whatever? You know, even President Bush had made comments that basically... Um, said Jesus isn't the only way or something like that. He, he didn't come right out and say it, but he, he alluded to that. And, you know, that's politics. You, you know, you can agree with that. Um, or, you know, you can you can disagree. You can say, oh, he really shouldn't have said that, um, you know, or, or, or he compromises Christian principles. Um, you know, maybe he shouldn't have, but, you know, you're under a lot of pressure because everything you say, is scrutinized. You know, we talked about um, a while back a Wisconsin Synod woman where um, they said, oh, well, your denomination teaches the Pope's the Antichrist. Is that, you know, how are you going to um, be a representative for Catholics? You know, and she went, huh? You know, so people are going to take your, your beliefs and they're going to, you know, use them to their own political ends. And things have changed a little bit. I mean, um, you know, for years uh, at a lot of these official functions, the guy's been Billy Graham. I mean, he's been the one that people have turned to again and again and again. Um, his his viewpoints from Rick Warren's probably aren't all that different. Mm -hmm. But nobody's going to get up there and complain about Billy Graham doing an invocation. Right. You know, nobody's going to call him homophobic or anything else. I mean, he just has too much stature, too much, you know, growth behind him and stuff. Um, 
and I think that you know we're, we're kind of dealing again here almost with, the, with you know, but that's no longer the case. Uh, now uh, there are in certain ways some of the stuff is a little bit more sharply defined, and I think there is a need on the president's behalf. I don't. I, I would have said the same thing. John McCain had been elected to to try to be more inclusive. Uh, because you've got to govern from that that perspective. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you need to agree with. I mean, there's this. Um, uh, How's this quote? Is this? Uh, this isn't Obama. This is. Uh, I can't find who said it. Um, it's a very productive place to be, but a very difficult place to be in a pluralistic society. Uh, it's often difficult to recognize the authentic spirituality of different faiths without bringing them into conflict with each other. All right. Here's the thing. I, you know, I would contend as a pastor, not as a politician, and huge difference, um, that Christianity is the only authentic faith. You know, it's the only truth. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, but uh, you know, when you when you're looking at uh, the president, he can't just go around blasting other religions. You know, um, Jimmy Carter kind of. Did. I mean, he was a lot more vocal about his belief in uh, that Jesus is the only way, and um, at least initially, right? Especially when he was running, uh, he you know he talked about being a born again Christian, and he he was one of the first people who really you know pushed that out. And I think it was partly because of him that Newsweek called seventy sixty year the evangelical, because you know he was very very vocal with his his, his faith and everything. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I struggle with this because, you know, I do believe Jesus is the only way. Um, but beyond that, how much, you know, as a, if I were in that position as president, how, how open could I be? Mm-hmm. You know, how open would I allow myself? How, how open do I think I should be, and would I allow myself to be? You know, to bring in different uh, people. I don't know if I could do it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I would be interested, you know, they talk about, uh, you know, taking their, um, <clears throat> uh, Barry Lynn, executive director of Americans United in Washington, said, it remains to be seen what Barack Obama will do with the moral or ethical advice he's getting from religious leaders. Um it would be odd if he were not meeting with people of faith, but he has to temper his religious views with the demands of the Constitution. You know, I mean, I think that he should be able to say, look, this is what I believe, okay? But that my beliefs, while my beliefs are going to affect, um, you know, how I govern, because anybody's beliefs are going to affect how they govern, that doesn't, you know, Christianity is a belief that all people are of infinite value. And so, therefore, I'm going to govern with that understanding that every human being has infinite value and and, um, and really is endowed with certain rights, you know, because of our value um, as creatures of God and as those who were redeemed by Christ. And, um, you know, so I'm going to respect everybody. I'm not necessarily going to respect um, what they believe, but I'm going to respect the human being. And... Is that going to, would that rile people up? Yeah. All right. Because certain people, unless you say all roads lead to heaven, they're not going to be happy. All right. But if you say that, you're going to offend a whole lot of other people. You can't please everybody all the time. So, um, you know, I, I think you could say that and, and just say, look, you know, don't judge me based on my beliefs. Judge me based on my actions. You know, judge me based on my ability to govern and, uh, and the decisions that I make. Um, one other thing, by the way, uh, you had a comment on the story, uh, and the guy, you know, said because of President Obama's uh, rather liberal views on abortion. Although interestingly enough, yesterday he talked about that every human life is is precious to God, um, which I thought was kind of an interesting comment for him to make. But uh, and his support for the Freedom of Choice Act, that he can't possibly be Christian. Um, you know, I really struggle with those types of comments because. Mm-hmm. You know, while I, while I'm definitely pro-life, I can't look at his heart. You know, and I can't make the decision what God's going to do with him. You know, um, I think, you know, I can say he is mistaken, Christian. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, uh, but I, I really hesitate to say he's not Christian at all. Well, the reality is, 
some people just haven't thought it through, you know, or they just, you know, they've been uh, influenced by uh, others that um, that say, well, no, you, you know, um, you've you've got to look at this a little differently, or the Bible doesn't say anything about abortion, which it does, um, you know, or things like that, and he just doesn't have a complete understanding. That doesn't mean that he's not a Christian. He says he's a Christian, and you know, unless we hear otherwise, we give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, I know lots of Christians that I've disagreed with on all different things, um, but you know, unless he comes out and says. Jesus is not the only way, or Jesus was just a guy and not God, or you know, or, or you got to earn your way to heaven, or something like that. Hey, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. So, so, uh, but that that, uh, that comment, uh, I appreciated it. Uh, the guy didn't put his name; he said just anonymous. But I really appreciated his comment. But I did want to did want to mention it. Uh, but you know what? Would really be good a psychic. That's that's who he needs to have at the table. He needs to have the psychics there. Yeah. Um, this is the first church of understanding behind me, sitting in that picture behind us. Uh, it sits outside Detroit, Michigan. And um, it is a New Thought church. Now, I didn't know the New Thought movement even existed still. Um, they were kind of, at least the original ones, um, were part of uh, not too far distance from the Christian scientists in that group. That was... Uh, uh, they were that same era they were developed. But anyway, so they had a psychic fair. Now, no tarot cards, no... Um, no um, predicting the future. No yeah. predicting the future, no um, uh, astrologists were allowed. Um, but one of the things I liked was I thought was really interesting was... Um, uh, um, uh, the, um, and I didn't know it was part of being a psychic, it was massages. Yeah, that sounded good to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this is probably like, uh, um, uh, you know, like acupressure and stuff like that. You know, we hit mm -hmm. certain pressure points in that, which, you know, the more that that's studied, the more they're, um, you know, finding that there could be some actual scientific uh, basis to some of that stuff. So it's not so much like a psychic thing or something. Uh, even our uh, even our um, health insurance covers acupuncture under certain circumstances. Uh, yes, because it does it does work. Um, but uh, one of them was uh, uh, having their ears cleared out through ear coning. I wonder if that's the, using the ear candles. Oh yeah, that's what I'm like. What is that? I know I've heard of that before, but yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I had yeah. a member of my church who loved those things. They, I, I thought they were uh, just. They're kind of. I remember seeing a news story about that a while ago. Uh, it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> well, that, and I think it's not only dangerous. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, fraudulent. Don't think it does anything. Don't think it no. brings anything out of your ears. No. Um, Makes you sweat. Uh, that, but then there's the crystals, jewelry, and gems. Well, now we're back to the old New Age movement where people gain strength and, you know, stuff through 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 crystals. Hey, I was at a table today and ended up buying some crystals. Or gems actually. Or one anyway. I was thinking maybe it was crystal meth. <laughs> There's plenty of that in Iowa. <laughs> no, this was actually a um a class ring for my daughter. So uh, I was you, you and Michael Phelps together, you know. <laughs> had a thing going. But your daughter's yeah. only a freshman yeah. in high school. What's she doing getting a class ring already? That's generally not to your junior or senior year. I mean, that, sophomore, junior year. You know, that's what we said, but they're uh, they're hawking them early, you know? So, yeah, okay. I don't know. It's uh, guaranteed uh, resizing and all that kind of stuff, so. Good. I think it's a funny thing is that yeah they had this you know this this stuff and it was open and they had all these these things there and it said a steady stream of people came in and out of the church many did not want to talk about the services they were receiving. <laughs> well, a lot of it's counseling. Well, yeah, a steady stream. They said there were a total of fifty people that visited. So that doesn't sound like I mean unless it was only going on for a couple hours that's not really a steady stream so I mean even here in our little town um, 
you know, if we have a dinner or something like, or we had a, um, oh, a couple of years ago, we had a health fair where we had people doing blood pressure and flu shots and all that kind of stuff. Got a bunch of nurses and that in. Um, and, uh, oh, we had probably 200 people. And I mean, we live in a town of 200. So going, wow, how small is Roseville? <laughs> of, of course I was looking at, um, I was looking at their, their website and, uh, their site statistics are, um, public. You can look and see what kind of traffic they get at least over the past week, but you can also see their total. And since I forget when, but it's, uh, like a year and a half ago, um, they have, they've gotten a total of, I can't remember now, it was like a thousand people or something like that. Um, a thousand hits. Uh, I mean, this is, a uh, our church website gets more traffic than theirs does. Uh, quite a bit more. I couldn't believe how many, there's a staff, a goings pastor, two assistant ministers, uh, an assistant master, assistant minister, vice president, uh, first church of understanding, um, and then uh, uh, a junior minister. I was like, my goodness. Yeah, uh, but how many of those are full-time? I'll bet they're not. I don't think any of them are. None of them are probably. But, yeah, this is a metaphysical church uh, which is open to assemblies of seekers of truth, whether it be for health, knowledge, or wisdom. Our members are pledged to serve God, the people, and to express us with spiritual food to live more efficiently and successfully. We believe in God the Father, of whom we are an integral part. We believe in Jesus, the Son of God. We believe everyone is a son or daughter of God. I am. This is madness. If you look at okay. yeah, you look at their basic okay. beliefs page and that. Basically, if you take Christianity and like sort of New Age Hinduism kind of stuff and throw it in a blender, <laughs> this is what you'll get. Um, probably mix in some soy nuts or something with it, you know, <laughs> um, or wheatgrass. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, just, it's kind of, it's, this is, well, this is syncretism is, is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's combining two different religions together, uh, to form something that's, uh, <laughs> where the, the, uh, the result, the, 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 the combination of the two is less, than their component parts. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, see, now it's groups like this. One of the things that when I was having this discussion about Mormonism, um, that they said, look, we have Jesus Christ right in our name. How can you say we're not Christian? All right? Well, you know, these people claim Jesus Christ too, but they say that we're part of God. And, um, you know, and, and, and stuff like that, that the Jesus is just one of the enlightened, um, you know, teachers or, or whatever. And so, yeah, they, um, they consider themselves Christian too. They look to Jesus for guidance too, but you know, there's absolutely nothing anywhere on their website that talks about his atonement, um, to pay for our sins and to give us oh, eternal hey, life. Hey, hey. That you know, it says that we affirm or expression the highest spiritual principle in loving one another unconditionally, promoting the highest good for all, teaching and healing one another, ministering to one another, living together in peace, in accordance with the teachings of Jesus and other enlightened teachers. So basically, arguing that Jesus is just one, a one enlightened teacher among many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and it's all law. So, but rather, it's that too. But. Um, uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, I you know, I, I think the part I kind of like the best is um, the uh, the foot massage. You know, the uh, two women who were doing that, and it cost twenty bucks, by the way, said uh, it relieves stress, unlocks energy, stimulates healing, and gives good health. There's seven thousand nerve endings in the feet, and massaging them can be a, uh, uh, um, uh, beneficial to the rest of the body. Sure. I give my wife foot massages every day. She didn't give me 20 bucks for it, though. <laughs> Man, my wife won't do it. Anyway, um, you know, and the woman says, if you're in a place of worship, this is one of the, the foot massage people, you're surrounded by a lot of love. God is in the house and helps with the people. 
Um, that's a nice little broad thought there. But see, I'm not sure how foot massage fits into psychic fair. You know, I mean, when I think um, psychic fairs, I do think the tarot cards. But this is more New Ageish fair. Right. Well, see, the thing is, there's uh, well, okay, so there's this woman, uh, Laura Petrelli. Probably no relation to say like Peter and Nathan Petrelli um, on Heroes. Uh, oh man, you think she flies, man? <laughs> well, I don't know because it says I like to get a massage because it loosens up the energy, you know. So, I don't, you know, I don't know. I could I could see you know Peter needing to loosen up the energy once in a while, yeah, you know, like that time that he almost blew up New York. So. so I'm sorry if if Laura Petrelli happens to watch this. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just... <sighs> yes, we have energy flowing through our bodies. It's electricity. It's, it's used by our nerve endings. But it's not some, like, bizarre aura that, um, you know, that needs to be, like, aligned to get a tune-up every so often. Um, right. you know, maybe if, you know, some nerve endings aren't firing just right or aren't, you know, the, the synapses are need a little adjustment. I'll, I'll grant that. Okay. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's purely biological, not, uh, spiritual. Um, uh, you know, I do believe we have a soul, but I don't believe that a foot massage is going to affect your soul. I imagine there's yeah. some way, but I can't figure out how. <laughs> if you, you know, read the Bible while you're getting a foot massage, maybe. Maybe your church could grow if you offered free foot massages during the service. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, there's those Baptist churches that do foot washing. Um, right, you can do foot massages. Time. There you go. Oh. I bet you them old farmers would love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boys. <laughs> Yeah, especially if they just come in out of the fields, you know, and still got a little bit of manure on the boots. <laughs> no, most our people clean yeah, up no, before I they come to church. So. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, maybe you all have some other opinion. Uh, podcast at CrossFeedNews.com. Dale, you uh, wrote me a couple weeks last week, and you said that uh, we had a uh, positive comment. Yep, yep. We got um, a comment. I... I don't have a, all I have is an email address, and I don't have a name, so um, whoever you are, I apologize for that, and I don't want to give out your email address on um, on the show, um, but uh, he was talking about uh, the lady getting excommunicated uh, for, and, and the, her being publicized uh, and all that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, so he says, you know, there's the nine, I'm assuming it's a he, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, whoever you are. Uh, so the nine plus one commandments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You know, he says, as a church, we need to be careful to remember that all sins are equal. I also have a problem with what most clergy defines as marriage, where the Bible does, where in the Bible does it say that the marriage begins at the altar? Were Adam and Eve married in a church? I define marriage as an exclusive relationship between a man and a woman. I realize most pastors believe it begins at the altar, but studying the subject under the direction of an LCMS pastor, I'm convinced what happens at the altar is making it public. If you think an exclusive relationship between a man and woman um, is a sin, what about being married by a judge? I enjoy your show and listen to it almost every week. I'm not a pastor. I don't speak Hebrew and Greek. As a third generation elder, I had the privilege of having theology discussed and explained to me from birth. All right. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for the... Um, for the, the comment. We really, really love hearing from our listeners. Um, and, uh, okay, here's, here's my understanding. And, and Jim, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, on what is marriage. It doesn't necessarily begin at the altar. It doesn't, um, you know, it can begin in any number of places. Um, and it's not a pastor that makes it, um, official or a judge or anything else, but rather it is a public declaration of the commitment. Mm -hmm. um, it is saying it is saying to the world, we are married, all right. And then mm -hmm. you know, in in the United States, there's the whole legal aspect that affects your taxes and things like that, and inheritances. And, and, and we license it. People get the license. Mm -hmm. 
but 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 yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, even we in our and at least in the agenda of the you know the occasional services book that I you know you know uh, I don't know if it still says it or not, but uh, you know now that they have given them up to each other by their public by 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 their vows, and have said so before God and these witnesses, I declare them to be husband and wife. So we you know even there we we say it's not what I say. Yeah. Uh, it's just oh, a one time pastor. Uh, yeah, I had one pastor one time say, you know, uh, by the virtue of um, by virtue as a called or a pastor, the uh, you know called a servant of the word, uh, I pronounce you husband and wife. And I'm sitting there going, uh, we're getting a little sacerdotal there, aren't we, buddy? Because you know, uh, you know, basically he just said by that, if you're not married by a pat clergy, your your marriage is not valid. Right. Um, but I kept my mouth shut uh, during that wedding. But uh, but I was I was I was just like, um, I mean, uh, and, and so marriage then by a judge is completely uh, valid. Uh, matter of fact, in Europe, all marriages are done by the secular courts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then if you want to have a church wedding, you can do that. But they're um, they're they're two completely separate things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, and and of course, now to go back to our my my favorite state there, Vermont. Uh, Vermont still has a common law, mm-hmm. and um, you know we uh, my wife uh, uh, my wife uh, has uh, an aunt uh, who is married under common law. They were out in this rural area, and but. Everybody understood them to be married. Yeah, and you know, you it, refer to each other as my husband, my wife. You know, um, it, if everybody under, understands you to be married, you're married. You know, right? And, and you decla- you understand yourself to be married. Right. You know, right. that's the other thing too is that we also understand ourselves to be married, um, as opposed to one couple I met who, you know, well, no, we're not married. We're we're, we're just living together. I mean, they didn't understand themselves to be married. They didn't understand themselves to have uh, a, that 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 commitment yet. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's that's you know a completely different thing. That now this uh, does create a bit of a, a, a difficult area when you talk about, right, for instance, down in, in Florida. This is pretty common. Um, you'll have a couple of of you know a widow and a widower that meet and and they. Uh, get real close and everything and they want to get married but here's the problem if they get married they lose their pensions from their deceased spouses Mm -hmm. and um and basically won't be able to afford uh to live or or will you know social security and that's pretty much it and it'll be pretty tight and so they say you know i've I've heard of them actually going to pastors and saying look we don't want to be legally married because it's going to mess us up financially we, but you know, we know that we shouldn't just live together. We know that we should be married. Can you do a marriage before God and not, um, and not you know, a, a legal one? Uh, because of the way things are set up here, no, sorry, we can't do that because we can go to jail for it. <laughs> so you know, at that point, well, not really. We can't because uh, I mean, we're just we're just blessing the relationship. I mean, it would be like a, um, in Florida. It would be like the state that did not recognize gay marriage, which is, well, everybody but Connecticut and Massachusetts and California, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, but, you know, but the, the you know, a pastor priest there, uh, uh, blessing this relationship. You know, having, you know, plus, so, you know, it would be the same, you know, basically the same thing. And there's no reason, you know, we can bless any, anything we want. Nobody can tell us we can't. Yeah. Um, right. You know, uh, you know, and I, I would, I've never had that case come before me. Uh, so I would, per, you know, I don't know what I would do if I did, because I would understand where they're coming from. Um, and generally, the the the, the, the male would be okay, because generally men earn most of the money. Uh, but uh, it's generally the, the woman there would lose her husband's pension. Uh, but they get, but again, do they consider themselves to be married? You know, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of one of the you know the issues. Uh, I had a couple um, that came to uh, Trinity, and uh, um, they had a son that they wanted baptized, and he was like 
seven or eight years old at the time. Um, and it was interesting because this guy called. This guy considered him, considered him to be married. He he actually called her his wife. He, you know, we we're talking. Oh yeah, let me talk to the wife about that. And always referred to her as his wife. Um, and she told me one time. She said, "If I'm going to be called his wife, I want I I want to really be his wife. I want to be married." Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's interesting because he kind of considered them to be married, but she didn't. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, I think it comes down to how do you file your taxes? Which box do you check? You know. So now the the real question here, though, is you know why do we sort of emphasize? Um, you know, one sin over others. And uh, this person is correct. You know, the, the Sixth Commandment is, is just as big of a, um, you know, just as important as any of the other ones, uh, yeah, except maybe arguably the first. Um, but, um, I mean, the first is more so. Um, but the, the I, I think that the reason that this one is latched onto a lot uh, by clergy and churches is because when people are publicly and openly breaking this one, it's kind of obvious, and it really sends a very powerful negative message. Um, it's also a very difficult one to get out of, just because our flesh is very weak when it comes to sexual sin. You know, this is, I've mentioned this before, that this is the one sin that God doesn't tell us to stand up against it. He says, flee from it, because he knows that we have such a hard time with it. And, um, so, and, you know, in, in that sense, yeah, it's, it's a big one. Is it bigger than the other ones? No. All right. But it's probably the toughest one to fight against. And so that's the one that we really, um, maybe emphasize more so, um, under certain circumstances, especially, you know, and, but, you know, I mean, realistically, if somebody is, is, um, openly, uh, breaking another commandment, um, and 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 said, hey, I'm going to do this, and I don't care. We as 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 pastors, as congregations, as you know, as fellow Christians, uh, we need to make a point of going to those people and saying, look, you're thumbing your nose at God here, and uh, you know, regardless which commandment you're talking about, and and saying, well, I, and that can be, yeah. I, there was a one one church I knew how to deal with them. Um, I heard about um, Ted Culver, who chairs um, Masters of Reconciliation, told a story situation that he got involved with with a guy um, they were two guys who were members of a church even had little fish out there they owned a, a, a an automotive uh, repair shop he had little fish on the sign and everything mm -hmm. and they were cheating customers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there you go and so the church yeah got involved with this and said look you know you, you've got to if you're going to claim to be Christian you got to be upright in your in, in what you're doing here you can't be you know finding things wrong that you know people you know, went never wrong before, you know, and, and stuff, and, and she ripping people off. That's that's not what we do. Um, I think, you know, to me, the, the, the big sin of the church is that breaking the Eighth Commandment. Um, and we, we you know, deal with terrible problems with gossip. And I've just seen people's reputations get ruined in the church. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, of course, you and I know about, the, you know, the... the uh, uh, New quote newspapers unquote running around our sin of the unofficial publications that just seem to slam everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know there was um, one blog out there. It was a very vicious few years ago called Lutheran Pope. I mean, it was just tearing down. And, you know, and by the time I, I just glanced through and just like you know, I don't think Jerry Kishner can breathe right as far as these guys are concerned. Um, and but then I knew knew some people who said some things about Al Berry were you know which were just like you know. Uh, you know, come on. He's, you know, maybe you know, disagree. With, feel free, disagree with him. Be be principled about it, but don't attack him personally, and don't blame everything that's going wrong in the LCMS at his feet. Right. You know, he just he doesn't have control over six thousand churches. So, for those who are in LCMS, we're talking about uh, our various uh, synodical or uh, denomination presidents. So, right. You know, any any time anybody's in a position of power, they're going to get blamed for all kinds of things. You know, and on that note, please pray for uh, pray for our president um, because he's got a a lot of really huge decisions to make, and um, and people expect him to walk on water. And well, he could in Iowa because it's all frozen, but um, you know, 
<laughs> anywhere else. Yeah, he's he's not a messiah. He's just a man, and there's only so much he can do. So uh, please pray for yeah, him. Yeah, but, I mean, but, but, um, but, you know, he can do all things. I mean, just look at the stimulus bill. My goodness, there's, there's something in there for everybody. Anybody who can take contraception and say that's economic stimulus, well, we've got something going here. Buddy. Yeah, they pulled it out. That's a different kind of stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, oh, but there's plenty of other fun stuff in there. Um, computerizing health records, that's, that'll, that'll change America. That's a shovel-ready project if I've ever heard one. <laughs> so, okay, I'm getting snarky here. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, maybe you all have, yeah. <laughs> maybe you have other opinions. Podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, we always like your comments and uh, appreciate them very much. Hey, that brings us up to the end for this week. Uh, it's always a joy uh, to be here. Thank you, all of you guys, uh, both of you who watch us every week. It really does mean a lot to us. Well, there's, you know, this is this is one more. We've got your two kids, and um, and we've we've had a couple other people. Uh, so we have George. Yeah, yeah. There's George, and then there's some. Um, in in the 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 one that won our contest uh, that goes to. Uh, that lives in Madison, and I'm sorry, I forgot your name. <laughs> um, it's been too long. My my memory's good; it's just short. So anyway, right. so, so thanks to everybody. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> please, we'd love to hear from you. Offer us your comments. A uh, reminder, you know, if um, if you'd really like to share your opinion about us, you can go over to um, to the iTunes. And, uh, and, uh, oh, and and by the way, if you don't want to give them your credit card because you're not a regular iTunes user, log, create an, an account in the App Store. Try to download one of the free apps. It'll come up this thing. You can create an account without giving them your credit card. Little tip. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, so then you can leave us a review. That's why I'm mentioning cool. that. So. We'll talk to you all later. Yep. We'll talk to you all next week then. Good night, everybody. God bless. <laughs>